This is Bogdan Smithy, recording a third vlog since the mine collapsed. Tom and I have found some puddles to drink water out of, but I haven't had anything to eat in so long. Every time I look over at Tom, I start licking my lips and thinking about nibbling on a leg. Still no contact with the surface. Still no way to know if they're even looking for us. No signal on this phone, of course, and no radio down here. Would my two-way radio help? Yes! Give it here! Can anyone out there hear me? This is an emergency. Hello, what's the nature of your emergency? We're in a collapsed mine shaft. You're isolated? Um, yes. That's great. Sounds like the safest place to be right now. But what's the problem? The problem is that we're totally cut off from the world. That's not intentional? Why the hell would we intentionally get stuck down here? Guess you've been down there a while and haven't heard. There's a pandemic up here. Everybody has to isolate. Sounds like you're in the perfect spot. Stay right there where you're safe. Just for a month. Maybe two or three. A year. Two years at the most. But we're starving! Well, I guess we can get some of the lower food and water down the shaft. But be sure not to touch it for 48 hours so that the virus has time to die. Well, thanks so much for all your help. Talk to you later. The only thing worse than starving to death at the bottom of a mine is having to stare at the food you're not allowed to touch while doing it. We need a distraction. I'll see if I can find another film to watch. Let's try this one. Are we going to take a close-up look at dandruff? I think it's just dirt on the slide. These are particles of radioactive fallout. I have a bad feeling about this. Okay, narrator, is that all you've got? And this is how a single particle looks magnified several hundred times. A radioactive piece of matter from a nuclear explosion. Nuclear bomb poop. These few particles can't do us any significant harm. But still, we must engrave a but California a Prop 65 attack, warning. Many billions of them would fall from the sky and settle to Earth, releasing radiation that could cause sickness or death in the area where they fall. Also causing fantastic laser light shows. Ladies and gentlemen, we give you computer-generated abstract impressionism. I think my optic nerve just overloaded. Great film, Bob. You're the best at picking this. After this dramatic music, I'm sure we're going to get a less sleepy narrator. Well, this must be about that video game. Department of Defense, so I assume this film had a hundred million dollar budget and dozens of cost plus contractors. This is like the Star Wars opening scroll, only cloudy and green and two dimensional. Strap in for the excitement. There'll be an animated Death Star any moment now. Well, the odds of seeing an immensely powerful weapon blow stuff up do seem quite high. They only wrote five seconds of music, so I guess we'll just have to keep listening to it in a loop. Hey, why isn't the water green? America's ugliest speech. Time to nuke it. Is this a civil defense film or a sunscreen commercial? To begin with, it may be surprising to know that radiation is something we live with every day. This girl is scooping spent plutonium. Far back in time, back before there was an Earth, there was Dick Clark. There were flaming fireballs in space. Is this Scientology? We call them stars. And there are millions upon millions of them. Looks more like an egg yolk. 
Each star, like our own sun, is a raging nuclear furnace that shoots out showers of particles too tiny to be matter as we conceive it, along with invisible forces that we call radiation. Basically, the sun has dandruff. This radiation and these particles travel through space at fantastic speeds until they strike some other matter which may make new flares of radioactivity. In this case, popcorn. They strike wandering asteroids, moons, and planets such as our own. Everything in space, Earth included, receives this radiation. Unless you're stuck at the bottom of a mine shaft. She's cross-eyed. Okay, why does she have a Star Trek tricorder? To monitor radiation levels. All around us in tiny quantities. Nature even planted unstable atoms deep inside the Earth itself. Uh oh, that's where we are. They decay one by one here and there in a barrage of inconceivably small and sound. Radioactive Fourth of July sparklers. Each explosion. I never knew how pretty and sparkly radiation. radiation was. Now I want some. All life on Earth has reached its present form in company with radiation from this naturally occurring radioactivity. Extremely thin, with extremely low level intensity, it has always been with us. It is nothing new. The art seems to be undergoing rapid mutations. Must be all the radiation. Can we blame radiation for 60s fashion? We don't worry about the small amounts of natural background radiation. Which is why we end up with sunburns and skin cancer. But to safely handle larger amounts, we must keep our distance and shield ourselves. Hey, THX 1138 is starting. For as the amounts increase, so do the dangers. Oops, blew up the lab again. The amount of energy generated by a nuclear explosion is enormous. This was a lot longer than I thought we'd have to wait for a mushroom cloud. Near the crater area, there is almost total destruction from blast and heat. And now, large amounts of pulverized debris and molten earth are pulled up into the mushroom cloud. This is where radioactive fallout is formed. Oh, millions of people die horribly in it too. The radioactive atoms produced in the explosion join with the particles of earth and debris. Making nuclear pimples. The mushroom shaped cloud forms. Is it just me high. or is this the runt in the litter of mushroom clouds? It looks like a cauliflower cloud. It's of highly radioactive particles of matter that we call fallout. This is your brain on fallout. The strong winds of the upper altitudes go to work on the cloud, blowing it off in one or more directions. Gravity tugs on the particles. The larger and heavier ones sink toward the ground, while Confetti. the Confetti! We must have won the war! With the wind. Some of the lightest particles remain suspended in the upper atmosphere. As time passes, their radioactivity grows weaker. And their so superpowers the stay. Remain aloft, the less dangerous they are. But the heavier particles, spread by high altitude winds, fall to the ground within 24 hours. Several miles from the explosion, they are about the size of table salt or fine sand. I hate fallout. These are the it's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets the everywhere. Of radioactive atoms, and so emit the largest amount of nuclear radiation. Which brings us to an all-important fact deadly as radiation can be. And this gives us an invaluable ally, time. What the heck is the Suppose narrator trying to say? What's not to understand? Uh, uh, never mind. By one o'clock, the total force of the residual radiation is at a high level. And millions have died and the world has changed irrevocably. By seven o'clock, it's down to one ten. And retaliatory strikes have set a nuclear winter in motion. In two days, although still dangerous, it's only one one hundredth. But in two weeks, it's only one 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 thousand. The hell does one 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 thousand mean? With this decay rate in mind, consider radioactive fallout conditions which might confront us after a massive attack. Did a lazy third grader draw this map? Within an hour, 
fallout would be a serious problem in the vicinity of explosions which occur on or near the ground. Today's forecast calls for heavy By band of nuclear explosions the in the attack, northeast this afternoon. The fallout area covers more and more of the country as the prevailing winds expand the fallout in a downwind pattern. And then the fallout turns pink for breast hours, cancer awareness month. 48 hours. Without shelter, millions would face death. With shelter, every large city being obliterated is no big deal. A few days later, those who have taken shelter will survive. Although they wish they hadn't. In many areas, people can even leave shelter for brief periods of time to carry out important tasks. Better than the pandemic, at least. Within two weeks, most people can leave their shelters for longer periods as the radioactivity decays to lower levels. Way better. Only two weeks of stay at home. The lesson is obvious. We must shield ourselves from radiation through the dangerous period. Now let's see how Armageddon plays out in Flatland. To do this, we need more than time. Fortunately, we have another ally. Radiation Man! Distance. Or that. The greater our distance from the fallout particles, the less radiation we receive. So try not to be near the bomb when it explodes? You would receive less radiation in the middle of a tall building than you would receive on the top or bottom floor. One perk of the windowless office. There will be more distance and partitions between you and the source of the radiation. The fallout particles which would cover the roof and the ground around the building. Only an insignificant amount would get inside. Better yet, find a collapsed mine shaft. And finally, along with decay rate and distance, we have still another and very important ally. Yellow warning lines. Mass. America's obesity when epidemic is strategic. fallout covers our immediate area, we can shield ourselves through the most dangerous period by using the sheer weight of any material. How's the 100-pound dress feel, dear? But the protecting material must be heavy. To shield out some 99% of the radiation, you would need about five and a half feet of wood. Not going to help them when they're still standing outside on the steps. Or one and a third feet of concrete. Or a half foot of steel. Or an nanometer of neutron star. Even though star. the thickness of these materials varies, they all weigh the same. This is why I live in a mud hut. It's much safer than wood. Taking a house as an example, it offers a small amount of mass and distance from radiation. But not enough protection in an area of heavy fallout. The solution is plain. Share a bunk bed with an axe murderer. Fallout shelters are the best defense against nuclear radiation. Short of not Whether provoking a home it for work. a single family, or a large community type in an apartment building. If I lived in a building that brutalist, kind of I wouldn't want to survive. You would probably need in case of a nuclear attack. Here we see two communist agents infiltrating the shelter. CDs look different back then. But the best shelter would be worthless unless it was used. You morons. Most people find it hard to understand how silent, invisible rays, which cannot even be felt, could be so damaging. Let's see what happens when radiation penetrates the body and attacks the cells. Please don't say what penetrates the, the body. And what happens when it is attacked? It's a simple organism which reproduces itself by dividing. Such exquisite our detail of cellular of structure. Cells. They're the building blocks of our blood and tissues. Now, powerful radiation strikes, and cells are injured or destroyed. Radiation will be represented by the oval. radiation stops before the accumulated dose is too great, almost all of the damage eventually will be repaired. If radiation continues, there are some cells less able to function at top efficiency. Lazy cells. Should the body fall behind in its recovery, severe illness or death could result. If your body isn't lazy, you have nothing to worry about. Radiation is the number one cause of car accidents. The key then is the amount, the total dose of radiation received. That is the weirdest theory. We measure thing. radiation the same way speed is measured by a speedometer. Miles per hour? Only instead of a speedometer, we have a rate meter. 
and instead of miles per hour, we measure the rate in Rentgens per hour. So basically the only thing they have in common is that they measure We need another device called a dosimeter to record how much radiation a person has accumulated over a period of time. A dosimeter is two meters, right? In the same way, we record accumulated distance. You know your miles. car is doomed when they only put five digits the on the odometer. Accumulated dose in Always read your dosimeter through a peephole. A convertible? Has this guy not thought about radiation shielding at all? With this in mind, let's return to background radiation. Is this a sunglasses commercial? In an average lifetime, a person might expect to accumulate about 10 Rentgens from his natural environment. Unless he's a night person. Not enough to affect his health. Narrator sounds disappointed. This same healthy person would need medical care if he received more than 200 Rentgens within a few days. Which makes him not really a healthy person. 300 Rentgens in the same period would cause severe radiation sickness or possibly death. Satisfactory. And as we go beyond 300 Rentgens, our the narrator of gets death really excited. Rapidly. Go team radiation! So now we see why shelter is vital. The difference between accumulating a large dose because of little or no shielding and a small dose because of adequate shielding is the difference between death and life. Don't think that crowd meets fire code. No clothing, of course, could possibly provide enough shielding. Somebody bricked over the windows? Of course, it blocks radiation. However, if you were to be in the open during fallout conditions... Or on a serial stage with false fronts... There is no such thing as a fallout suit, but ordinary clothing would help until you could reach the safety of a shelter. Then the fallout particles can be brushed off and outer clothing removed. So always wear several layers in the 100 degree if heat. If fallout settles on your food, the food itself is not harmed, since radiation damages only living tissue. But it will turn your kitchen green. You easily decontaminate or maybe blue. Using almost the same methods you use in everyday food preparation. Actually, even if you accidentally swallowed some fallout particles, it wouldn't kill you. Go on, you know you want to. effects, wanna. if any, probably wouldn't show up for years. Might cause you to stand perfectly still, still at the sink for hours, though. Of long-term effects, such as shortened lifespan, cancer, or hereditary damage, it's wise to remove the radioactive particles by simply washing, wiping, or peeling. Now you have to wipe both before and after eating. But it's vital to remember this. Neither water nor chemicals can destroy radioactivity. Only energy crystals. The fallout particles can only be moved or washed away. The law of conservation only of fallout. Time can reduce their potency. And what of water? Heavy water? Well, here again, the same rules apply. If necessary, you could drink water containing fallout particles without worry or immediate harm. No worries, you're just going to die of cancer. You have to for long, for water helps to wash itself through the natural processes of sedimentation and filtration. If your water doesn't wash itself, you and can wash it in water. Like this would carry most fallout particles downstream. Who cares about people downstream? In still waters, most particles would settle quickly to the bottom. Others might remain suspended in the water for a long time while a small percent of the radioactivity would dissolve. Into the stomachs of soon-to-be radioactive fish. The normal processing of a water treatment plant would make it safe to drink. And water coming from a covered well would be safe from radioactive contamination. There is no problem with breathing for air is not contaminated once the fallout is on the Yet ground. Yet another way the pandemic is fallout worse. Fallout is not a poison gas. Please see our companion film about shelter, poison gas. A simple inverted U-fitting on a ventilating pipe would keep fallout particles from entering the pipe and getting inside. But I want to use my cool post-apocalyptic gas mask. Of course, surviving a nuclear attack means more than just waiting in a shelter for radioactivity to decay to safe levels. Means no more traffic jams! Survival, reconstruction, and recovery would involve decontamination in many areas. A very difficult job. For a job this big, you're going to need a motorized Generated tricycle. Elman Morse, dose rate 15 rentgens per hour. Okay, unit 8. There goes another five years of his life expectancy. 
Fallout would have to be removed from important areas by street sweepers. If you live in an unimportant area, get your broom and deal with it. And the remaining particles could be flushed out of the way. The music suggests this be fun. Food would be a problem. Don't talk to me about food After right now. After a nuclear attack, we would first use existing food supplies from shelters, markets, and surplus food storage. Then we'll turn to cannibalism. When fallout had decayed to safe levels, people could begin to work in the fields for limited periods of time. People you don't care about anyway. In a few areas, the land would not be suitable for food, but such crops as cotton could be grown. In the blast crater, try collecting glass for a living. Crops for human consumption would be grown in areas that had received the least fallout. But the fallout is the best tasting part. The reason we would be able to grow and eat food planted in this land is that the transfer of radioactivity from soil to plants is extremely low. Can we cover ourselves in plants for protection? Was planting in an oil slick really a good idea? Okay, we get the picture already. And so, if nuclear attack should ever come, in spite of every effort to avoid it, we must be able to survive and rebuild for the future. Nebraska won't be any less attractive after the bomb. But survival can only come through knowledge. The basic facts we must all know are relatively simple. First, there is nothing new about radiation. You should it stay this far from Earth in the event of nuclear war. What is new is the vast amount we would be exposed to as a result of nuclear explosions. But if you live in Denver, you're used to it. Much of this danger would come to us in the form of fallout. Try our new happy upbeat fallout. But we are not without personal weapons or defense. We have brooms. One of these is time. Radiation decays, and so we would not have to take maximum precautions indefinitely. That's right. All you need to defeat a nuclear attack is patience. Another defense is distance. Radiating particles 50 feet away, for instance, would not affect us as much as particles a few feet away. And our third defense is mass. I feel Any like I've heard this all before to somewhere. Keep the penetrating rays from hurting. Yeah, a few minutes ago. The greater the weight of the material. Should I just recycle the, the jokes I made last the time we saw this? Might as well, I guess. The best way we can use all three weapons of defense is with an adequate shelter. Thick enough to shield off a good part of the radiation until it has decayed to safer levels. This should have been the whole film right here. They had to add 20 when minutes of padding attacks, to get paid more. The cells of our body are damaged. Most of them can repair themselves if the total dose over a period of time is not too high. Even though the rays penetrate our bodies causing damage, they do not infect us and make us or anything else radioactive. Despite the plot of every sci-fi movie and comic book ever. That's why food remains good no matter how much radiation has passed through. Mm-hmm. Irradiated food. It's with called water microwaving. Food will do you no immediate harm, but for long-term safety, it's best to wash, wipe, or peel the food and filter the water. Wish we'd had a filter for the muddy puddle water if you drinking were down here. Outside under fallout conditions, this must be one of the Potemkin villages they test nuclear blasts on. Skin. But you would still need to find shelter quickly. Why show a 15-story building when downtown is going to be vaporized? If we act on them intelligently, we can increase our chances of surviving nuclear attack. And the key to survival is adequate shelter. And canned food so that hideous you'd rather the die than eat it. government has a nationwide fallout shelter program. The goal is adequate fallout shelter space for every man, woman, and child. Or at least the white middle class. And this goal can be reached. For with knowledge of radiation, we can face the facts about fallout. 
take action to protect ourselves. Mommy, can I wash the ball? And girl? learn how to live in the nuclear age. Well, I feel prepared. How about you? Ready to go. Let's get this war started. Ah, the soothing sights and softly rousing music of the nuclear apocalypse. It's just so calming. I think somebody messed up the margin settings on the credits. I wonder what the Soviet version of this film was like. I can root around for it. Please don't. I can't take another of these. What a triumphant conclusion. We're definitely winning the war. Well, thanks for cheering me up. You're such a pal, Bogdan. How many times do I have to tell you it's Bogdan? But you're welcome, I think, if you are being sincere there. Now what do we do? We could try staring into the dark until we hallucinate shapes again. Is radio still on? Yes, I've been listening. You guys are weird. Is our food going to be here soon? Within the hour. Remember, don't eat it for two days. Can you send some toilet paper, too? Sorry, we don't have any. What? The world's out of it. You guys are weird. <laughs>